about money. And, um, you know, I think it's a thing. It's but powerful, powerful perspective. And I want to just take that a step further as you're talking about that and really zero in on the female entrepreneur and businesswoman. I don't like to focus or use the negative voice, like focus on the failures. Yep. Instead, I'm going to ask you a question from a positive voice and say, what more do females need to do in the world of business or as business leaders, as entrepreneurs? Because you're living it and breathing it mm-hmm. right now. So what advice can you pass on? I think for me, when I when I look at female entrepreneurs and literally our entire business is to support, you know, mainly entrepreneurs, I just think that there is this like glass ceiling thing where we don't give ourselves enough credit. Like we, for me, I never dreamed of what Sugar Lash would be. It was always one foot in front of the other, right? Okay. But if you stay true to that and you can kind of, you know, pour yourself into everything you're doing, but not be scared to take those leaps, there's no telling what you can do. But I think oftentimes as women, we're like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm not going to d- create a huge business because, you know, it's just me or it's just whatever. Yeah. And so I think that that's, I think that's honestly why I speak so much is because I'm not, I'm super smart at business stuff for whatever reason, like building business and branding and all mm-hmm. of that stuff. Cause I've got good, um, taste, I guess. Um, but everything else, oh my gosh, I still don't do spreadsheets. I don't do financials. I don't do, you know, analytics and all of that stuff. I don't, um, I can't organize anything, but I can, do what I can do well. And if you're willing to outsource and you're willing to hire out, then nothing can stop you. Mm -hmm. You can only stop yourself if you're not willing to take that leap or whatever. But if you believe in yourself and your vision and you can get the people that you need to support that vision, then yeah, there's no, there's no telling where you can go. I think we just don't give ourselves enough credit for whatever reason. There's still that thing that it's like, like you have to keep yourself down. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, the next steps what's I mean you're you're living a dream right now Mm -hmm. a lot of people listening would be like wow but I got you know again I have to close with this question of where do you want it to go what is is there a bigger dream is there another goal what's next for you in the company I think for me we do have some pretty audacious goals and I mean now that we're at this level and we're in those countries and we're you know supporting that many people it's it's now how do we more efficiently serve them so we're talking about you know opening warehouses in Asia and Australia and the UK and whatever so that they can get easier shipping Mm -hmm. to them and then um, we're launching a consumer line next year which is going to be really cool because we've always been business to business which has been great but oh my goodness I just want to get our stuff in like Holt Renfrew or you know Sephora or wherever Alta obviously and um, be able to offer that stuff so we're, we're launching like growth serums and strip lashes anything lashes is what we're gonna do so that's launching next year and then I want to do that salon experience that's gonna be called high lash society and I want to just open kind of this cute like three bed salon but very Instagrammable and with all the retail in LA and New York um, and see how those do and then maybe you know franchise those out or open more corporate or whatever so there's lots of stuff and then I think we have about 60 products that we're launching in the next 12 months so there's just it's it's always a whirlwind and it's just so it's so fun I'm so blessed especially right now and I just want to say this because it's important to say is that um personally I think for me the goal is obviously adjusting to this like single mamahood and um mamahood motherhood and um yeah they're good (laughs) we get it um and really the goal was always to it was always a means to an end right it was always like let's work to get to this certain level Mm -hmm. so that I can have more time with the kids and I can be there and for me I think I shine as the kids get older for those really important conversations and like hormones are going crazy and emotions are running Mm -hmm. high and as they you know my my ex was so good when they were babies he loves to hold the babies and whatever and I'm so good now so I'm I'm embracing and I'm hoping that you know we've laid the groundwork for so many things and I have the most incredible team and so I think the next few years will be you know still me staying the visionary a thousand percent but but stepping away a little bit more and Mm -hmm. and making sure to like cultivate those moments that I that I need yeah talking to you here like you're you just radiate happiness so I'm not going to ask you if you're happy because I can tell it's Mm -hmm. palpable I'm going to ask you why are you so happy oh 
there's a lot of things to be happy for. Um, I think right now I'm most happy for having people around me that are so um, supportive of all the different aspects that are me. I think I've struggled a lot in my career. You know, if I was doing really great at work, it came at the expense of what people thought of me personally or in my personal life. And if I spent too much time with the family or personally, it was always at the expense of this. And for the first time, like in this last 12 months, I feel like I've actually got it down. Like I'm consistently with my family. Um, I'm consistently there when people need me at work. And they're so happy to fill in the gaps where needed. Um, When you're smaller, and I think you're a little bit more, you know, I'm always going to be a little neurotic because... Most entrepreneurs are, right? (laughs) Yes. But oftentimes at the beginning, you know, staff didn't love that and they wanted you to be more consistent. And now I have this team that embraces me and they're like, do you? And um, it's great. And with that said, even the separation from my husband, it's, he's still my anchor in so many ways. Like, and he always will be. And, and so I don't feel I'm lacking in anything. And I don't know, life's what you make it. It'd be easy for me to spin it into a negative thing if I wanted to. And it's not that I don't have moments of that. But I'm so beyond aware that every hard time is the means to the next chapter. And life's usually going to work out okay. And if this all went away, if, you know, if the business folded or if, you know, whatever happened, it's still going to be such an interesting thing to push you where you need to be in that moment in life and so I think if you can hold on to that then you're okay wow that is perspective (laughs) has anyone ever told you you're an old soul yeah yes no doubt because that's how I was going to finish today saying that you know age in your case is just a number I mean like stunning inside and out uh, but old soul wisdom that we can all learn from i admire your vulnerability so much thank you and i appreciate how you've stepped into your own and are not afraid to embrace your story and use your voice to tell it all over the world we can all learn from your journey and it is rich rich with takeaways what a gift for me and all of our listeners today that you stepped into the inner circle thank you so much for doing so thank you all are going to be cheering for you on the sidelines and watching you grow and explode. And one day I'll say, she's out at my table. <laughs> and we had the best conversation. And I'll still live here and it'll, we'll do it again. Let's do it again in 10 years and see where we are. Deal. Okay. Thanks, Courtney. Thank you.